My test kitchen compatriots and I live in coastal New England, and this is a seafood lover's paradise. Here's some of the equipment you're gonna need to prep fish and shellfish. Now it's always best to keep fish on ice. So if it's gonna be a little while between getting home and cooking your fish, you'll want a container that can store the ice and the fish together and do it neatly. These are Cambro dry storage containers. This one is the six quart size. We actually use this for dry storage like flour or sugar, but it's also great for storing ice and fish together. And this one is the 12 quart size. They come in a wide range of sizes and the prices do vary. When we bought this, it was about $7, but you'll wanna check prices before you go ahead and buy one. Now, when you're gonna cook fresh lobsters, you need a large pot to do it in. We've tested 12 quart stock pots and this is our favorite. This is the Cook and Home stainless steel stock pot with lid in the 12 quart size. It's $45 and testers liked it for a few different reasons. Number one, it's fairly light, so it's easy to lift up and that's important if you're gonna have a pot full of soup or stock. Also, these handles are really generous. They're big, wide loops. They have a rubber coating, so they're easy to grab. It makes it easy to pick up the pot and pour from it. Okay, your lobsters are cooked. Now you are gonna want to get through the shells. A lot of people use crackers for that. We actually prefer these. These are the RSVP International Endurance Seafood Scissors. They're about $15. You can see that the blade is narrow and arched. It's also got micro serrations on the cutting edge, which made it really effective for tough shells and delicate shells. We're gonna try it on this lobster. First, we're gonna cut through the top of the tail, like so. Then we're gonna cut through the other side of the tail. And this is why we like that arch, because it follows the contour of the tail. And then you can just break it open like that, and out comes your lobster tail intact. Now, a personal favorite, fresh oysters. If you're gonna buy oysters and open them at home, please do not use a regular knife. They're too sharp and they're too flexible. You could really hurt yourself with that. A dedicated oyster knife is just the opposite. The blade is rigid, it's thick, and it's dull. This, by the way, is our favorite oyster knife. This is the R. Murphy New Haven style oyster knife with a stainless steel blade. It's $27. You cannot go wrong with this oyster knife. You always want to protect your hand, so you fold a dish towel over it, but leave the pointed end out, because that's the part you're going to work with. That's called the hinge. You work it in, and when you feel it catch, twist it, and that will pop off the top of the oyster shell. Then you can take the blade of the knife and just drag it along the top to release the oyster. You can do the same thing on the bottom. That will release the oyster from the bottom shell and then you're ready to go. You get a squeeze of lemon or a hit of hot sauce, if that's what you want, or a mignonette, and cheers, you have your oyster ready to go. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.